graphs. A lot of y'all are horrible at them. In my last video, I asked y'all if y'all wanted a graph tutorial, and well. So in this video, I'm gonna be teaching you about graphs and how to use them in like an easy way to understand. But before we do that, let's go get a drink because I'm hella thirsty. back okay so graphs i'm gonna try my best to try and explain it to y'all because i know a lot of y'all be looking at the graph editor thingy and not know what it does so like my goal for this video is to show y'all like basically what it is and like how to use it basically all right so we're gonna start with a circle so let me just make a little circle all right let's start with scale so i'm gonna bring up the scale with the s on the keyboard and i'm gonna bring the size up to 200 so this is basically what it looks like with no graph at all so to get to the graph editor you have to highlight the keyframes now you can press one and then press shift and then select the other one or you can highlight both of them like this or you can just select the scale button right here and it's gonna automatically select them once they're selected um, if you go to the graph editor right here you're gonna see that you can't really change it so you actually have to easy ease them first how do you do that so basically once you highlight them right click i mean left click wait right left. Oh. oh bro yo i completely forgot my right okay i've never had this issue before in my life Hold stop on. the cap right <laughs> it's 2 36 a.m right now when i'm recording it like i swear like i'm not tripping you could use that against him so to easy ease them, you're going to want to highlight your keyframes, right click, and then go to keyframe assistant, easy ease, or you can just press F9 on your keyboard and it should basically do that. So once they're easy eased, you can go to the graph editor and then actually edit it. Now, this is a value graph. There's two types of graphs in After Effects, at least that I know of. So it's the value graph and the speed graph. You can switch between them by right clicking on this empty space. And then right here you got edit value graph or edit speed graph. So with that being said, we're going to be using the value graph for this video. I wouldn't really recommend speed graph unless you're like a really beginner. And that could be the reason that you're here. You've been using the speed graph and now you want to get to learn the value graph. Okay, so now with the speed graph, um, easy ease, basically you get this default graph. If you play it, it's a little bit smoother now. But now it all depends on what you're going for, what type of animation you're going for. Let's say you want it to start small and then big, but you want it to do it fast if that makes sense so if you grab this little stick right here and bring it up if you play it now it goes fast and then slow but mainly fast at the beginning now i'm going to try my best to explain this to you if you click on this you're going to see a little square and that's basically where you can drag the, the little sticks you can you can make it outside but that's that's a different story. I'm going to get to that later on. So you're looking at this little curve. Now I'm going to give you an idea to basically help you understand and kind of learn the graph. So basically, if it's going like this, it's basically like you're in space and you jump. So you're just going to start going up. Now the tighter this is, the faster you're going to go. So if we play it, you go faster. Now, if this is down here, you're going to go kind of slow. See? Now, if we bring this up and also bring this and make it tighter, the tighter it is, the more you're going to jump or the faster, I guess, like gravity takes you or whatever. As you can see, it does it way faster. When will you use this graph? This graph is basically used as a transition starter so if you want to start a zoom in or a position um transition this is the graph that you would use first or basically at the beginning 
now if you want to do the opposite and have the circle pop out at the end then you would do the opposite of the graph so basically bring this down just like this now if you play it it literally goes at the last second so for this think about it as a water slide so let's say you're right here you're gonna slide and then you go up now the tighter it is the faster you're gonna go so basically if it's over here it's gonna take you a little bit longer to go see and then also if you decrease this it will take you even less time to go up there so remember the tighter the graph the faster it will go now take in mind that you don't always want things to go fast so from there you just basically calculate how fast you want it to go you're basically in control of everything so if you want a subtle slow zoom in then it will be less tight if you want it really fast towards the end then you'll make it tighter pause hey, yo, what the now what about if you wanted to zoom in in the middle now that's a different graph that you can use you might think that you can just scoot these keyframes over here and it does that but that's not super smooth at all it's a, it's a little bit smooth but it can be smoother and for that you can just use a different graph the graph that i'm talking about is an s graph as you can see it makes an s now for this over here is going to go slow once it gets over here it's basically you're in a slide you're going faster and then it goes slower so if you play it you get this now remember what i said the tighter the faster so if you make this super tight it's gonna go really fast and make a stop pretty fast just like this now what about if you want to make it slower and you would do the opposite of making it tight and you'll make it loose loose <laughs> you'll make it basically less tight so like this and now you get a smooth zoom in now another graph that you can use is doing the opposite of this the s graph so you'll bring this down and then this one up so if you play it so it goes from being fast slow fast this graph in specific is used for many things but one of the things is velocity edits you know how editors be making it fast and in the middle slow and then fast this is basically the graph that they use but a little bit of justice so they'll bring this down over here and bring this like this at a angle so it's basically a little bit smoother i don't know how to explain it but it is a little bit smoother that way than rather just having it straight up like this. Let me know if you want to relax it. Now remember that I told y'all that this is the square where you want to keep things in, but you can also get out. So let's say I increase this and I take it out. You see this little extra little thing going outside the box? If you play it, it'll basically go up. You can't really tell, but let me see. Let's try to do the opposite thing because if you bring this down you see this little extra thing it goes the opposite way so instead of scaling up it scales down a little bit right here and then once it goes back in it scales up so if you decrease this and increase this even more you'll see that it goes the opposite way okay so we covered scale now let's cover position now this is a little bit different and you'll see what I'm talking about. So I'm going to put this little circle over here. I'm going to create a keyframe and go a little bit forward and then put it on the other side over here. So if we try and easy ease this, so highlight all of them, keyframe assistant, easy ease, go to graph. You'll see that you can't control them, even though you easy ease them. Now, I'm not sure why they did this. Um, Actually, I, I do know why. So basically position has three um, positions. So it can be X, Y, and Z. And I think Z is only for 3D, but basically you can't move them right now. So you can actually do this little hack. I don't know if people know about this, but um, I know about this. So if you go to the position right here and you right click, 
you can click on separate dimensions once you click on this now you'll see that you get the x position in the y position you don't have the z because it's not a three layer if i turn it into a three layer you'll see that you get z position but we're not talking about 3d right now now with this um the circle is moving to the side and that's x position or x i or x axis and going up and down that's a y position so technically we won't be using y position as you can see it's just flat because there's no actual movement on the y position i know it might seem a little bit difficult you know xyz just letting y'all know you don't need to know math to know this i know xyz was taught in math but just to let y'all know i had a seven in math class i don't mean seven like one through ten i mean seven like one through one hundred like I, I literally had a seven and i graduated high school somehow okay so with that being said we're not going to be using the y position so just to get rid of this let's just turn off the the keyframe and go back to x position now you get the graph and basically you can do whatever you want with the graph like i said you can bring this up and then you can do this and now you got this which i told y'all the tighter it is the faster it's gonna go the looser it is the slower it's gonna go you see and then if you do the opposite you can bring it over here and bring this over here and they'll go to the right really fast you can make the s graph and you'll get this you can make it less tight and they'll be slower see like it's it's really simple you can do the opposite of this which right here is going fast in the middle wait hold on is it going fast in the middle Yeah, it's going fast in the middle and then slow on the edges you can do the opposite by bringing this down and bringing this one up so now it does the opposite so it goes slow in the middle and that's basically the graphs that you're gonna need the most you're, you're, there's more possibilities when it comes to graphs but as in edits and normal motion graphics you don't really need that complicated of graphs now you may be asking what about when there's another keyframe in the clip so let's make another keyframe and let's bring this back to the middle i guess if we go to the graph editor you'll see that we got this weird graph now now for this is going to be kind of difficult to control sometimes as you can see so honestly you can try and mess with this you can actually get some pretty good um animations but i wouldn't recommend it you can do it you see you can do it but i wouldn't recommend it now what i would recommend is stacking your keyframes with a null now in my last video i talked about getting smooth animations and movements and if you want a more in-depth video about what i'm talking about Go watch that video because I already explained it over there. But yeah, with that being said, I hope you guys um understood graphs a little bit more. Let me know in the comments if I actually did a good job explaining this. Um, yeah, like and subscribe. We're we're almost at 100 k yeah. Did y'all like that little intro uh filming stuff that I did? Did y'all like do y'all want more on this channel? Let me know in the comments. Um, if you want more, actually, I made a new channel recently, um, and I have a video posted already. And it's basically just like that. So if you're looking for more content like that, definitely go check out the new channel. But yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video. Stay safe. Deuces.